There are songs in our lungs There are words in our There are secrets on Well, on the bench this evening is a massive piece of timber right here, and this is white oak. And uh, this video here is in response to an email I got from a subscriber the other day. Uh, Alan, uh, forgive me, I can't remember your last name, but anyways, his name is Alan. He emailed me and said that he was real interested in woodworking and uh, really like the old style of making your own lumber not going to the store and buying it but he didn't have access to a local sawmill or had any chainsaws or any kind of equipment to do anything with and i said well i'll put a little video out to show you how you can kind of process your own lumber without with just some basic hand tools and you don't even need a sawmill or anything all you need really is a wedge a sledgehammer a fro if you got it you don't have to have it and uh, just one regular hand plane to be fine for working this stuff up. Now this piece of white oak here is uh, the dimensions are 34 inches width is seven or eight inches at its widest point and I think the thickness of it is around um, around about 12 quarters which is uh, three inches. Now this, uh, a lot of uh, traditional woodworkers call these bolts, uh, B-O-L-T-S, it's a bolt of timber. And uh, the way I got this piece of timber was I didn't throw this, I didn't throw this through the wood miser. And uh, I, mean, I, I used a chainsaw to cut the tree down, ain't no doubt about that. But I, what I did was I took one, one uh, section of the log and I cut it to this length and I used a method called riving, R-I-V-I-N-G is a correct spelling r-i-v-i-n-g riving and uh, i didn't video that process because when i done that for this i didn't really get an email so i wasn't really preparing a video for it but i'm going to put a link over here if this shows up in the cards or not if it don't check the video description to a Curtis Buchanan's channel. He's a Windsor chair maker about 20 minutes from here he's probably the best Windsor chair maker in the in the states or probably if not the top two or three but uh he's got a video that shows the process how he breaks down a log with wedges and a sledgehammer and a fro and uh splits out pieces like this and all i'm doing is this is just like quarter saw material or as peter fallsby says this is what quarter saw material uh strives to be because it's uh you know when you quarter saw it you try to, get the, try to get that grain at 90 degrees, but you don't always get that. And when you rive it here, when you, when you go on the radial plane, when you're kind of pieing out the log, you get a perfectly uh, quarter sawn uh, bolt here or piece of timber every time. I need me a camera that shows the display toward me because I can never tell what's on the camera or not. But anyways, well, this may or may not show up, so I'll point it out. The growth rings are running this way right here. So here's the bark of the tree, and here's the heartwood, and the growth rings are running this way, okay? This right here is the growth ring plane right here. It's the easiest plane to cut on, and that's also the plane on this white oak that you'll see your medullary rays, or some people call it tiger striping, but it's, it's medullary rays. And this is the growth ring plane. This plane on this side right here and this side is the uh, tangential plane. This, this right here will shrink. The, the thickness of this board will shrink, but the width will barely shrink at all, if any. And uh, that's why quarter saw material is so stable. But when you rive this board out, you, uh, it's, as uh, Roy says, you, it's, you uh, explore its weakness to gain its strength. Because these boards are very stable and very strong because the drain is perfectly running straight because this log had no spirals or nothing in it. So once you watch Curtis's video and then once you go out in the woods and split one of these out, you will be ready to get to where we're at right now. And if you noticed in my last few videos doing a lot of hand planing, this workbench is just terrible. It's awful. 
I need to uh, build a proper uh, joiner's workbench. I got the material to do it with. I mean, I, I own a sawmill. I got no lack of lumber around here. Lack of time, I uh, have a little bit of that. I need to get me a proper workbench build. I got this second hand and they sell them at Harbor Freight. I've had it for years now and it, it's done okay when I was first learning hand planes years ago, but now it's just, it's gotta go. For all the heavy duty work that I'm doing now with joinery planes, it just, I'm, it, it walks all over the workshop when I use it and I'm tired of chasing it down, put it that way. I'll, I'll grab the draw knife and I'm just gonna get rid of the bark. I'm not going to worry about the sapwood right now. I'm going to leave it on there. It's not really anything to deal with. But uh, put it in my little face vise on my cheap little workbench here. I know what y'all thinking. This is more of the same on his past videos. He's using the draw knife and the hand plane. But this is fun stuff. And if this don't interest you, just go ahead and click off of it. But uh, Alan had some questions. And I'm just trying to answer them the best way we can here. So I got my John Neiman log peel and draw knife. And uh, something's buzzing over there. It's probably those stink bugs. So I don't know about you guys or what parts of the world you're in, but those little stink bugs have infested Tennessee. They're everywhere. On warm days like this in the winter, they just come out everywhere and they're a real nuisance. It, it got to be in the 60s today. And it's uh, January the 12th. Crazy weather. But anyways, we're gonna peel this bark off. And Alan, if you don't have a draw knife, you can use a hatchet or an axe or the claw or your hammer if it's sharp enough. I would planned on doing some logging videos this week, but we had snow on Monday and Tuesday. So my boy was out of school, so I was watching him. It had rain yesterday, rain today. And tomorrow's Friday and hopefully there's no rain tomorrow and I'm not sure what day this video will be posted so I may be several days behind you but uh I got some good sawing in line for tomorrow on the wood miser if we have good weather we'll do a video on it some very unique pieces of timber and if you don't have a draw knife Alan we'll just grab an axe or a hatchet you don't have to have one this fancy or nice it's just First one I saw in the shop. This is the first time I've used this thing. This is a camping axe, which is pretty heavy duty for this right here. A small Gransford uh, hatchet or a small forest axe would be plenty for this. But anyways, we'll use it. I got this in December. Uh, no, I got it for my birthday in December, but I got it a little bit before then. My wife and my little boy got it for me. But this is a, uh, a camp axe made by Liam Hoffman. Liam Hoffman over in North Carolina. He's like, he's like a 19 or 20 year old blacksmith over there and it's just about an hour away from where I'm at. He does some great work. This is the first axe that I've owned that he's made. I'm not even tried it out yet, but uh, good stuff. So Alan, what you want to do here is get your axe, of course, and just come through here and take small controlled cuts. Peel that off. And this thing is very sharp. Man, it, that's the first time I put it to any kind of any kind of material. That's a nice edge that came on it. If you're uh, familiar with that show on History Channel, uh, Forged in Fire, he was on that show a few months ago, and he won it. He's the youngest person ever to win on that show. So his website's linked below. So check it out if you have time. All right, now we got this uh, in the bench dogs here. And uh, this is already pretty flat on this front surface here. It's split rather well. And uh, as you can see, it's already not a lot of uh, high or low points in it. Not a lot of uh, wood fiber sticking up. I've seen a whole lot worse than that. It's... Anyways, you, this is the point now to where you get a hand plane out. You do... Usually a wooden jack plane or a wooden scrub plane is what you would grab. And uh, I've got plenty of those, but this is what I've been using here lately is this jointer plane, so I'm just going to keep on using it because I've got a real sharp edge going on the iron. You can use metal planes, but this wood is green. It's wet. And if you use a metal plane, it's going to really affect the sole of your plane. And it could affect the color of the wood as well because these acids in the oak will, will uh, counteract with it. It's kind of like putting a nail in oak when you see in these old barns. A lot of the barn wood's got black areas around the oak. 
or with nails in a tree log, same principle. But anyways, you can use metal planes, but you just gotta clean them good afterwards. It takes forever. Just uh, an old wooden plane's fine. You can get these at the flea market for a little bit of nothing and just sharpen the iron and flatten the bottom with flat sandpaper on a table saw base if you have to. They're easy, they're pretty easy to tune up if they're solid. And uh, you just work this top area here until you get it to pretty decently flat to the way you want it. And they go from there. And this is going to be the part of the video where I'll play music. And I'll probably put this about three times faster than it was. So this is how you flatten the boards when you're working with them. Give you an idea what the surface of this wood looks like. This is the bottom of the board. As you can see, it's where it's split. There's all kinds of fibers sticking up. Yeah, little slithers awesome. there. Yeah. You know, you can tell it's been riven or even split with, you know. As you work down, if you come down here to where I started planing, you can They're see awesome. the difference there. I planed that edge first for, for that reason. As you can see right here, this is smooth. in there that's what you're left with that nice finished surface I'm, I'll finish this board later so since we video on the whole process of that it's pretty much the same thing we've been seeing I'll put a little water on that grain so you can see those rays pop up now this right here is just a little bit high as I'll work this part down it will even out with this low this low area right here as you can see that's what you come up with when you got a nasty board like this when you rive it out and you think it looks like firewood, a little bit of hand planing, a little bit of patience and some little bit of work, and some nice wood out of it. I mean, that's premium white oak right there. There's no defects in there at all. That's clear stuff. It's very valuable. You go to the hardware store, go to your local uh, lumber yard and ask for some riven white oak, and I bet you they ain't going to have it or probably know what you're even talking about. 